Let's stand together this morning, if you will. Everybody sing this with me. Oh, he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. And I will rejoice, for he hath made me glad. Oh, he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. And I will rejoice, for he hath made me glad. with thanksgiving in your heart and praise this morning. Amen. For he has made us glad. We're just so happy to be here again this morning to worship him and to hear what he's got in store for us today. Amen. We don't have any written requests, but we want to continue to remember our sister Nellie Hammond in her prayer that God will just continue to touch her. Also, uh, the Hazelwood family we had mentioned here on Wednesday night, I think, uh, having the funeral this week, today or tomorrow. So we want to pray that God will just comfort them. I uh, want to continue to remember my Aunt Tammy in prayer. The devil's just messing with her mind and uh, making her think she's having a nervous breakdown. So let's just keep her in our prayers today. We want to continue to remember Sister uh, Debbie Moore in our prayers, Sister Judith, and also Sister Kinsa in our prayers this morning. We have a lot to pray about. Our God is mindful of each, each and every one of these requests this morning, and he's also mindful of each and every one of us that are here this morning and what we have need of in this service today and he's here to provide those things amen so if you have something on your heart just make it known by an uplifted hand god sees all of our needs today and knows what we have need of in this service today amen brother jonathan would you come come and lead us in prayer brother we're witnessing a miracle today by the way we're making a brother very uncomfortable today but be in prayer for him if you would today. <laughs> Amen. You glad to be in church? Amen. I tell you, I missed two services in a row when I feel it. I'm ready to have service this morning. Amen. We don't come just to show. We don't come just to do our part. We come to let God speak to us. He can speak to every one of us this morning if we'll let him. Amen. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, what an opportunity, Lord. Lord, we ought to be, Lord, so much more thankful than we are, Lord. Lord, we ought to praise you so much more than we praise you, Lord. Lord, each one of us, Lord, should be willing, Lord, to get out of our comfort zone, Lord. To step aside from our fleshly ability, Lord, from our human understanding, Lord, and to step into your presence, Lord. Lord, I just know one moment in your presence would make everything all right. Lord, you see the needs that we have, Lord. Lord, you pre-planned these needs so that you could be the need giver, Lord. So that you could be a healer for our sickness, Lord. You could be a savior for our loss, Lord. You could be a way provider for our confusion. Lord, you could be wisdom, Lord, for our misunderstandings. Oh, God, I ask you, Lord, to come amongst us this morning, Lord. Lord, as we've truly brought you into the house of worship, Lord. We've brought you into this place, Lord. Lord, now receive us as we worship you, Lord. Move for our sicknesses, Lord. Move for the request, Lord. All of the ones spoken. Sister Debbie, Sister Judith. Lord, you see them, Lord. Lord, praying for them for months, Lord. Lord, looks like there is no end, but God, you know the beginning from the end, Lord. 
Move for us this morning in a special way, Lord. Lord, anoint Brother Mark so, so anointed this morning. Lord, that he don't even know what he's doing. But he steps aside into your veil, Lord Jesus. Lord, then anoint our pastor, Lord, I pray, Lord. Lord, let him come get outside of himself, Lord. Lay his body, just step aside, Lord, and you speak to us in divine love, Lord. Touch us, I ask you, Lord. Lord, I know that you will, Lord. We're here to worship you now, Lord. Receive us, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In your name, the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray the Lord will just do that this morning, just anoint us this morning. We don't even know what we're doing here today. Praise the Lord. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, Brother Ben Norod. He got a call at the last minute, I believe, and had to go out. So let's just remember him in our prayers today that God will just be with him. and The meetings will be blessed there as well. Amen. <clears throat> In a manger long ago, I know it's really so. A babe was born to save men from their sin. John saw it on that shore, the lamb forevermore. Oh, Christ the crucified. Yeah. 
Aren't you thankful this morning? All of our sins have been forgiven. And the Holy Ghost placed within. Praise the Lord. And I'm just so thankful. He abides in me. Let's sing that A flat. And I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. For the hands of God in all my life I see. My bliss, yes, the secret all is this that the comforter abides with me. Oh, he abides, he abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides in me, in me. And I'm rejoicing that and day as I walk. you thankful that he abides in you this morning there's no thirsting for the things of this world they've taken wings long ago we gave them up praise the lord Amen. Let's sing it. Sing it. my jesus my savior oh lord there is none like you
you just love being a child of God, a child of the King. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. He's worthy of our praise this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be flat. How great is our God. Oh, just sing with me. How great is our God. his word. Praise the Lord. Don't you just love him this morning? We'll let you have your seats, if you will, this morning. We'll have our ushers to come and to receive the morning offering. You just give unto the Lord, and I know he'll bless every effort today. Do we have a report today? Praise the Lord. Why don't we just come do that right now? Praise the Lord.
have a couple of birthdays. Today is uh, Malachi Thompson's birthday. We're going to wish him a happy birthday today. Why don't we give him a big hand today, if you will. Happy birthday. Helen Torres is celebrating hers on Wednesday. Let's give her a big hand this morning. Her Amen. Amen. Uh, I think the, the money for the uh, Christmas dinner that we're having on the 15th is due today, so see Sister Deanna about that if you uh, plan on going. And also, I think Sister Laura has got a song this morning, so Sister Laura will make her way up today to sing for us. Did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you this child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. child you're holding is the great I I also want to welcome the, I'm so terrible with names, so forgive me if I get it wrong, is it Ramsing? Family with us this morning, God bless you. And, um, 
And it's my understanding that Ravi, is that correct? He uh, is a song leader as well. And every song leader has a song. I know he does. So this morning, brother, if you, you come sing for us this morning. Lord, we got the whole family. <laughs> and in addition. Amen. Good morning. You got, you got, you all hearing me? You hear, you hear me on this mic? Amen. Good morning, and God bless everyone. Um, as you know, my my, you all all know Joy and my brother married Joy. So, we, you hear me? Could they mix in? Yes, yes. As you know, um, Micah married married to Joy and. Um, which is the family that comes with it. Uh, so you know how they say you marry, into, you marry somebody, but you also marry the family, right? But um, I don't know if that's scriptural, but you still have to put up with the family, right? <laughs> so, so this is what you'll have to put up with. This is part of it, and we have much more back at home, a few more. I guess we're big like the Young's family, Brother Mark. Uh, you all have people everywhere. Um, but we're so good to be here, such a nice spirit of worship to come into church. You all have a sincerity in your worship, and I really appreciate that. God bless you, and um, we know Sister Scale so well. You know she's been a, a help to me when I was younger. I, I used to feel so, so unworthy to play the piano for her back then, and um, even still now. But um, I know the Scales and Angela and um, Dory and Brother Scales and family very well. I know Cameron's dad really good. Um, I know Brother Joseph Hammett. I remember when he dedicated his church in uh, Athens, Georgia. What he was very fiery and vibrant um i he still is but one thing he did i don't know if he ever does it here he jumped up on a table at a dinner and he did a loud whistle to bring everybody's attention um to get everybody to listen i don't know if he does that type of stuff still but he was uh, real energetic and fiery and um i'm sure he still has some of that so you all pulled that out of him he still yeah. amen so anyway so we're glad to be here we'll sing a song and uh, if you know the chorus just um, sing it with us, this Isaac's my brother, he's singing, and these are singers, I just kind of um, go with the flow, amen? If you all get, okay, this mic works now, good, good. And lift them up, for I have not the strength to praise you near enough, for I have nothing, no, I have nothing without you. So take my voice and pour it out and let it sing the songs of mercy I have found. For I have nothing, no, I have nothing without. will 
So take my body and build it up. May it be broken as an offering of love. For I have nothing. No, I have nothing without. this earth Amen. Let me lead you in one song this morning. I'll turn it back to Brother Mark. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Amen. Well, can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody love me like Jesus. Love me like Jesus, and nobody. Love me like the Lord, and nobody. Love me like Jesus, He's my friend. He picked me up, he picked me up, he told me to run on, told me to run on. One 
You're a friend to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Appreciate the song this morning. Amen. Appreciate our brothers and sisters. There's gifts all over the world. And I thank the Lord for each and every one of them, don't you? Amen. Aren't you looking forward to the word this morning, what God has in store for us today? Did you bring your barrel? Amen. For the Lord just to fill it up this morning. Amen. Let's go get some scripture out. So let your word be born in the manger of my heart. Let it live in me. Let it live in me. Let it start. Live inside this house of clay. But if I'll just yield my vessel and let him have his way from glory unto glory, he'll change me day by day. Let your word be born in the man. God. What a promise that we have this morning. I believe that we're living at a very pinnacle of time to see things unfold before us. When I think back of the young Joshua that took the children of Israel into the promise from Kiddush Barnea to Canaan's land was only about 10 days journey symbolizing the people of this age. We're right here at a time where this message is taking us right into our promise of a rapture. 
And the majority stayed back in Kiddush Barnia. But praise God, there was a Caleb's people that stayed with Joshua's preaching. Hallelujah. Not Moses' laws, but Joshua's. We are under the Joshua's message. Hallelujah. Right here in the end time, God is taking the people into uh, their promised rapture. And we're blessed. We're not looking back. What happened in Egypt does not concern us. We've been delivered from the bondage of organizations. God has called us out of denominations. We're under the Joshua's message. Hallelujah. There's a people on this last day. They're, they're going in by the promises of God. We have a God that is more than able to take us through. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing to be with you in the house of the Lord. Uh, I don't know if they mentioned, but let's remember Brother Roger and Sister Connie. They were trying to get to church this morning. Had some issues with their vehicle. Also, Sister Laura Gadman uh, scheduled for surgery on Tuesday, so let's remember her as well. And then I'd like for you to continue remembering my mom in prayer. She's at home now, resting. And uh, we're believing for a good report. Because it doesn't matter what we're going through. God is able to bring us through the fire. You might be going through hell right now. I don't know. But you're coming out on the other side. Because the fire has a way of purifying us. Our God is able, as the brethren come this morning, this is the tithe of first fruits you give to the Lord. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things I could not understand. But many times and trials, the weakness blurred my vision, all oh, and my frustrations get so out of hand. But instead, I am reminded I've never been forsaken. Lord, I had to stand one test alone. Oh, that's when I look at all the victories and His Spirit rises up in me. Oh, it's through the fire my weakness it makes wrong. Sing it with me And He
Hallelujah. You know, there are moments in our lives when we think, God, I cannot take this heat. But you see, there's some pirate that's still left in us. And God just passes us through the fire one more time. When we come out on the other side, hallelujah. Hey, Amen. There's something that's pure inside of us. So good to be in the house of the Lord with you. It's so good to have my family here this, this morning with us, the Ramson family. They're my family. Hey, Amen. We go back a long, long way. Mark, it's just good to see your precious wife, Isaac, all of you. Hey, Amen. just brings back old times. You know, the Lord is good to us, isn't he? He's a mighty God, and he's an on-time God. And just to think, all these years, we're still traveling on, Brother Mark. The message gets sweeter and sweeter every day for us. Some see giants. Some see mistakes. But the bride sees the promise. Hallelujah. The Caleb's people. Hallelujah. Some says there's giants in this land. There's faults in this message. But the bride says, what are you talking about? Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going on by God's grace in this last day. So good to be in the house of the Lord with you. Appreciate our musicians. And we'd like to turn your attention right straight to the word of the Lord. And we left off last Sunday speaking about the Caleb's people. That's the bride of Christ under their Joshua. Hallelujah. The Joshua is the prophet of the age. You remember that? The Holy Ghost is the prophet of the age. Yes, sir. Amen. So now the scripture says here in Joshua chapter 1, just a couple of places to lay the backdrop for the message this morning. If you will just be a little patient with me, I'd like to make sure the foundation is sure. Joshua 1 and verses 6. Moses, my servant, is dead. That is not Brother Branham. That is Moses under the law. Now, some people seem to have the concept that this is the prophet. No, the prophet is Joshua. And the Holy Ghost cannot die. You believe it? We are under the Joshua's anointing. How many believes you got the Holy Ghost? Then the prophet is in your heart this morning. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan... Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give them even to the children of Israel. And every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you as I said to Moses. Now God echoed this from the law. This was a shadow of good things to come. And God speaking through the lips of Moses, pointing the Joshua people to the reality of the promise. You believe it now. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Let me say this to you this morning. That there were 200,000 demons that were released from the spirit, from the uh, river of Euphrates. And these were ecclesiastical spirits. Religious spirits. But God is saying to the Caleb's people. That you will possess the gates of every demon power that is released in this hour. Glory. Every antichrist spirit will be subject to our feet. You believe it now. The river of Euphrates. All the lands of the Hittites unto the great sea and towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. And there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. You see, man did not talk us into this. Man did not bring us into this. But God, by his foreknowledge and by predestination, through the voice of a prophet, went a crying in the land. And thy germ seed recognize the call of that eagle. I'm so thankful for it. He said, for I, as I was with Moses, so would I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. 
So, so where do you put all the critics and all the bloggers? Hallelujah. When God has already told Joshua that he will not fail him. You've come a little too late, brother. You came a little too late. The ship has already left the dock. The bride's getting ready for a consummation. Hello, somebody. Can I preach to you this morning? The message is already vindicated. The bride has already been called out. The church is now going to the wedding supper of the Lamb. So be strong and of good courage. I'm speaking to you, bride of Christ. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Joshua records the consummation of the redemption of Israel out of Egypt. We understand that redemption is, uh, has two parts, out and into. And the key phase in this passage is that Moses, my servant, is dead. Now Joshua I want you to take the people into the full promise. I want to speak to you this morning uh, on the subject, walking into your full promise. So he's taking us into the full promise. The key phrase is Moses, my servant is dead. Law, which Moses is a representative, could not never give a sinful People, victory. You believe that? And we see now that Joshua is bringing us into the promise. Joshua is parallel to Ephesians. The book of Joshua is the Ephesians of the Old Testament, the heavenlies in this age. So now go with me into the book of Ephesians. First place we'll take is Ephesians chapter uh, 1. Gotta find my place. And verses 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Oh, I love that. You see, it wasn't angels that determined who would be in the mind of God. It was not left up to uh, Gabriel or Wormwood or one of the angels. But it was God, according to his plan and his counsel, that has determined who will be in the rapture. You know, also we have obtained an inheritance. Have you gotten an inheritance? Hallelujah. Jesus did not left me an inheritance. He came and he purchased my inheritance. Someone didn't just die and left me an inheritance. He came and he brought the blood of the lamb that totally gave me back the abstract title a mouthful redemption. I'm not walking under a partial redemption. I'm under full redemption. Meaning I've been fully forgiven by the blood of the lamb. Doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. I'm under full redemption. I'm not under Luther or Wesley or even Pentecost. I'm under the blood word of the age that God has called us. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That he might be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Amen. Stand therefore, Amen. having your loin guarded about with truce. Amen. I don't mean anything, truce. Amen. We have present day truce. Amen. Hallelujah. Luther's message will not work today. Wesley's message will not work today. We have truth in this age. And having on the breastplate of righteousness 
and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, I love it. I love it, don't you? We so appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we deem it a grand privilege to be back in the house of God once again. I ask that the Holy Spirit will now take preeminence in this meeting. As we have gathered in, the songs have been sang, wonderful songs of Zion, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will now just take His place, take my mind, take my words, step into my spirit, Lord God. Take control of me, shut my mouth from saying anything that will be, oh God, offensive to the body of Christ and grieving to you. But open my mouth to the channel of the Holy Spirit and let revelation be poured out of this vessel today, Lord. Have your way in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the church says. Amen. God bless you now. You may be seated. This is going to be our last service here in the sanctuary for the next two or three weeks. Uh, they're doing the construction and remodeling of the, uh, of the facility. So I, I would that you would bear with me this morning and indeed bear with me as I lay the word in place. That the spirit of the Lord will just take preeminence uh, in the service today. Walking into your full promise. You know, we have an inheritance, a full promise. We have an inheritance of full promise that God has given to us. To inherit means to receive an irrevocable gift with an emphasis on a special relationship between the benefactor and the recipients. But understand this morning, unlike legal inheritance, our benefactor God does not die. Yet he provides material and spiritual blessings for his people. You see, our benefactor doesn't have to die to leave us an inheritance. It was already willed in the mind of God. The inheritance includes... All promises from God to the beneficiaries. How many are the beneficiary of this? You see, God's promise to Abraham was the land of Canaan. And that his descendants has an eternal possession. We have an eternal possession that cannot fade away. That cannot be, uh, be, be dissolved. That will not be expired. It is an eternal possession. You see, when God makes an unconditional promise, there's absolutely nothing that can prevent its fulfillment. Not one obstacle can stand in the way of a promise that God has given to us. And that promise is as certain as the existence of God himself. You see, when God said to Abraham that I will bless you and thy seed, thy lineage after thee, it was an eternal a blessing that can never be altered. It can never be challenged because the eternal God made this promise. And when God speaks it is the absolutes. There's not anything to alter the plan of God. So God does not forget, is never late, and never gives short measure of his promise. When God says that he will make a promise, that promise is an eternal possession, and there's nothing in the world that can take that away from a real child of God. The inheritance, we understand, is the task to occupy the land. And God has promised to Abraham that thy seeds shall possess the gates of thine enemies. So we understand that it is an inheritance. God has given us an inheritance that we will possess the gates of our enemies. I don't mean... Uh, somebody that don't like the kind of clothes you wear or 
maybe the, uh, your style of singing or the house you live in or uh, such like. I'm talking about Lucifer himself. I'm speaking about the Antichrist, Satan himself. And we notice that the inheritance is the task to occupy the land. In Joshua 1 and 3, the Bible says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you as I said unto Moses. So God reaches back from under the Joshua's message and he goes all the way back to Moses and said, I give that promise to Moses from under the law. And now how God is now breaking forth from law under the grace dispensation of Joshua. Now the people will be living under the power and the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Notice that Abraham's spiritual descendants will dominate the inheritance. Not Moses. But we notice Abraham's spiritual descendants will dominate the inheritance. Not under the law, but through the pardoning grace of the living word to the beloved bride in this age. Oh, praise God. Understand that the royal seed bride are heirship to every promise of the land through Jesus Christ our Lord. You are heirship to the, the promise that God has given us. In Galatians 3 and 29, Paul actually uh, puts it in place. He says, if he be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Amen. So if he be Christ... He are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This promise is under the laboring grace of Jesus Christ. It is under the laboring grace of Jesus Christ in this age. In Romans 4 and 11, the Bible says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. Through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Not under the law, but through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He drives it down even further in Romans 4 and 14. It says, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effects. So we are heirs to the promise under Jesus Christ, under our Joshua, Joshua is Jehovah's Savior. The pillar of fire is Jesus Christ. The pillar of fire met Moses. The pillar of fire met Paul. The pillar of fire was in this age. There are only three manifestations of the pillar of fire. Do you believe it? Oh, I know people will like to challenge that and say, well, you know, I, I saw the pillar of fire and I saw light and I saw this. But I'm so thankful that our Joshua told us that, you know, you can see a lot of things. But you can be certain when you see the pillar of fire and you look at it, you know it is the vindicated presence of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. Who are we following this age? Jesus Christ. The pillar of fire vindicated this dust, saith the Lord. It was God in our midst. You believe it this morning. So we understand now that the bride have received the spiritual adoption, whereby we cry, of a Father. The Spirit itself bear witness, the Bible says, with our spirit that we are children of God. Watch Paul now. He drives it home in Romans 8, 17. He says, if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Christ is the anointed word. God reveals himself in his word. God is revealed in his own word. Do you believe that? So Abraham's special spiritual descendants will dominate the inheritance of the day. Do you believe it? In Joshua 1 and 6, let me give you a passage now. He said, be strong and of good courage. 
For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land. Praise God. It wasn't for everybody else. It was for the Joshua's people. It was for the Caleb's people. He said, this people, amen, this people, watch this, this people, a specific people, not anybody, this people, this called out people, this called out bride, this people, you believe it now, shall now divide for an inheritance of the land. I, I don't feel any remorse, I don't feel any, any animosity towards uh, those that are not this people. I do not feel any hate or vengeance towards somebody that cannot see the Joshua's uh, uh, commission, that cannot see the message that has brought us to our inheritance. I'm just thankful by God's grace that my eyes have been opened to see the truth of this age, that my spirit has been exposed to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But unto this people, all oh, praise God. Oh, I can stay there all day unto this people. We're not just anybody. We're this people. This people. Hallelujah. If I were to be in a big audience of people, and there were people that I knew there, and I was addressing a, a certain specific people, I would say, this people. I know this people. Amen. These people are specific. They're called out. They're single outs. They are covenant people under the inheritance of Jesus Christ. They're under the airship of God. Glory. And there's no devil in hell. They can talk them out of that. I love it. He said, unto this people shall thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. It was promised to a selected people. It was promised to a selected people. We've been promised to occupy the land that God has given us. And our Joshua has brought us into this land. And in this land, it is flowing with milk and honey. It is everything we did not have back in Egypt. It is everything that will take us to our body change. It is everything that will bring deliverance to our families. The sickness in our lives to our hard questions we cannot understand. It is this word that will deliver us. Perhaps you're here today. You're at this place. And there's many things that seems to be going in different directions in your life. Maybe an ailment, a sickness. Maybe a family matter. Maybe you're in a valley of decisions. Perhaps there are things that are happening that are right before you that's demanding an answer. This message is for you this morning. Because I'm going to take you right into your full promise. I believe that we're not standing here at Kiddush anymore. We're going in under the Joshua's message to take our, our, our promise that God has given us. I'm going to change gear now, but I want you to hang in there with me. God said to Joshua... It was all theirs. Amen. The land was theirs. And God gave it to them. But they must fight for it. We need some fighters. Some people are going to fight for their inheritance. Some people are going to fight for what God has promised them. A people under a Joshua's message. That's not sitting back in the easy chair of life. But standing up and declaring, I know the truth. I know what God has promised me. I'm walking into my full promise. So we understand and we see that the land was theirs and God gave it to them, but they had to fight for it. You see, it belongs to you. But you cannot have it until you fight for it. It's yours. But you got to fight for it. It's your health. It's your family. It's your sanity. It's your spirituality. Are you with me this morning? But we got to fight for it. But Joshua's message told us that God has given you the land. Don't worry, friends. He already crossed over like Moses did and he viewed the land. And he came back and told us it was a land flowing with milk and honey. And he said, I saw you over in that land. 
we've got a promise that God has given us that we were already seen beyond the curtains of times. We've only dropped on this side of Jordan now to take our possessions. And as I said last Sunday, not one hoof will be left behind. No family members. Amen. Nobody is going to die. God's going to take us in. Do you believe it? My, I love it. Questions and answers. Brother Graham said, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Amen. What do they do in Canaan? They were possessing their rights. Glory. They were possessing their rights. They could not possess their rights till they got into Canaan. Friends, we had no rights unless we're in the Holy Ghost. You have no rights until you cross over into this message. If you're still living under the shadow of Luther or Wesley, you have no rights. Joshua, give us the rights. Joshua, give us the rights. Joshua, give us the commission. Joshua anointed the Caleb's of this hour to take the land. You believe it, church? They could not, they could not possess their rights till they got into Canaan. They didn't own nothing in the wilderness. Thank God. Then when they came into Canaan, then they had rights. Tell the devil right now, I got rights. I'm under the Joshua's message. I got rights. This is why Satan's trying to talk some people out of the Joshua's message. To take them back into Egypt again. But there's a bride that stayed with Joshua. As long as she stayed with Joshua, she saw the promised land. You believe it now? Then they came into Canaan. Then they had rights. We've got rights. Hallelujah. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you're in Canaan. You have to fight for it every inch of ground. You have to fight for it. Yes, sir. But once you come into Canaan, hallelujah. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you're in Canaan. The Holy Ghost is receiving a revealed word for your day. When you receive that word into your spirit, hallelujah, the womb of your spirit shuts. Praise God. He cannot receive no other seed. Glory to God. You came a little too late to tell me. Hallelujah. The womb of my mind has been shut up by thus saith the Lord. Malachi 4 has pregnated the spiritual womb of my body. And I'm not producing anything else but Jesus Christ. Pure fire anointing is over the bride. Oh, devil, don't get me mad this morning. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, friends. We are under a Shekinah glory anointing. We are under a Pentecost of Shekinah glory in the state. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Praise God. You believe it? When you receive the Holy Ghost, you're in Canaan. I don't expect people that have not received this word fully to understand me. Because we speak a different language. They don't understand me. I don't understand them. So let's have an understanding. Amen. Let's agree to disagree. You talk a Kenneth Barnia language, and I will talk Canaan's land language. Amen. We're going to talk Kenneth. We're going to talk what they talk in Canaan. You know what they said in Canaan? We are more than able. You know what they said in Canaan? Boy, we are like grasshoppers. You got a grass. You got a grasshopper anointing, and you got a spirit of Caleb's anointing on the other side. So we're 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 at variance. We are not on the same level. Hello, somebody. I don't understand grasshopper anointing. I only understand that Joshua's message is going to rapture my body. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, we're not going to be defeated. Tell somebody next to you, we are not going to be defeated. We are walking into our full promise. I want you to notice that Paul instructs us to stand. Ephesians 6. Having done all to stand, stand. 
I'm telling you this morning, stand. I don't really care what Tom, Dick, and Harry's doing. Stand. If I tell you something different than what this word says, stand with the word. If I tell you something different than what our Joshua told us, stand with the Joshua teaching. Having done all to stand, stand. Praise God. I thought it was very special how he repeated that twice. Having done all to stand, stand. Stand. You stood. Stand. Keep standing. What are you doing, Brother Heaven? I'm standing. I'm standing on the promise. I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages. Hallelujah. Oh, I know. He's promised me something. So there's a spiritual boldness that makes us become stoic in the face of adversities. You know why? Because we're standing. Regardless of the circumstances, even though all hell is breaking loose in your life. Hallelujah. Our faith will not falter. I got something for you this morning, Satan. Our faith will not falter. We will stand stoic in the face of adversities. We will stand bold in the face of adversities. We will say like Caleb, get me my mountain. Hallelujah. You see, our faith will not falter. It doesn't matter what we're going through right now. Let me say this. Every single person that is under the sound of my voice right now is under attack. Your finances, your health, your family, your inheritance. You know why? Because you do not belong here. And you have an inheritance that God has given you. And Satan is fighting for that inheritance. But I got a message for you this morning. Our faith will not falter. I want you to look right in the face of your circumstances and say, God, I'm standing. You see, you've got to reconcile your circumstances with your faith. Amen. When you walk with God, you have to reconcile what you're seeing with what you believe. You see, Caleb had to reconcile what he was seeing with what Joshua told him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I don't care what everybody else is saying. God has promised me my family, my health, my inheritance, the Holy Ghost. So I'm reconciling my circumstances by my faith. You believe me this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua could have stood there and said, you know what? You guys are telling the truth. There's a lot of giants in this land. But you know what Caleb did? Caleb said, no. Joshua told me because of what Moses told him under the law. That thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy. I'm telling you this morning. The devil cannot destroy your inheritance. Satan cannot destroy your inheritance. I don't care what he's doing right now. He cannot mess with it. Hallelujah. So now you have to reconcile, hallelujah, what you're seeing with what you believe. Because if you go by what you're seeing, you'll be like the other ten spies. But God's raising up a caliph's people. That's saying I'm not reconciling what I'm seeing, but by my faith I'm going this morning. I'm walking into my full promise by a revelation that I believe. How many believers do I have? I believe. Tell the other ten spies, I believe. You came a little too late. I believe. I'm reconciling what I'm seeing by what I believe. A prophet came in this age. Our Joshua told us even what the land looks like. Hallelujah. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm going by Joshua's description of the land. You know what he said? He said it's 15 miles, square miles this way, and 15 square miles this way, and 15 square miles this way, and 15 square miles this way. Hallelujah. It is that new Jerusalem. It is that capstone. It is that bride that's coming down pure, glorified, sanctified with all of our heritage. You believe it? When Joseph... 
when Joseph was separated from his father's from his father Jacob. Hallelujah. And finally was reunited. Amen. And sent message to go and fetch Benjamin. Hallelujah. When Benjamin was coming, you know what they were coming back with? Wagons full of blessings. Amen. Joseph listened and he says, I hear wagons full of blessings. That's coming to reunite with me. I don't know what you're listening to, but there's wagons full of blessings that's coming your way this morning. Amen. I, I believe it all my heart. So I'm walking into my full promise by revelation that I believe. And this promise is coming into fruitation. You see, you can't operate by sight. Because all you see is sicknesses, obstacles, hindrances, defeats. You have to bring into harmony your current situation with your faith. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I'm talking about walking into your promise. You have got to bring your current situation in harmony with your faith. You know what faith says? The land is already yours. God said it's yours. What are you doing over in Kiddush Barnia? Once you walk over into the promise. Why don't you step over and, and walk upon the land? God told Abraham, walk through the land. That have I given thee. Walk through the land. I love that. Walk through the land. Praise God. Check it out. See what all I've got on the other side for you. Walk into the land. Lord, I got some grapes over there. I got some fruits over there. I've got some victories over there. I've got deliverance over there. You believe it, friends? Oh my, you must reconcile your circumstances with your faith. You must come to a level that you have faith in spite of what you can't see. You have faith in spite of what you can't see. You see, these ten other spies could not operate under that Joshua's anointing. They could only see what they could see. And all they saw was giants. But what I see is a victory. I see your healing. I see your deliverance. I see you've been transformed into the power of God's resurrection power. You believe it this morning? Oh, what a Savior. What a God that we serve today. You must come to that level that you have faith in spite of what you can't see. Paul tells us in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 and 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Listen to me this morning. We walk by faith and not by sight. You're walking into your full promise. You see, we're not worried about how the promise will be manifested. God said, walk through the land. It all belongs to you. Praise God. Lord, even though I don't see it, I have faith to believe that the promise is mine because Joshua has already told me that. That the land is a good land. It's flowing with milk and honey. I can't see it, but I believe it. God says, walk through the land. It all belongs to you. You see, God transcends all boundaries of time and works in his own time. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, I've been waiting for a long time. I've been praying for a long time. All these other spies are saying the message. Something's wrong with the message. Let's go back to Egypt. Who wants to go back to Egypt? Who wants to go back to Pharaoh? Who wants to be under the taskmasters? Hallelujah. Amen. But Joshua told me it's a good land. I'm standing now. I'm standing on the promise right now because I know that God transcends all boundaries of time and works on his own time. It's, it doesn't matter when God does it as long as he does it. It doesn't matter if it's last minutes or it's 10 minutes early or an hour early or a week early. If God does it, he does it. Do you believe it, church? Brother Nathan, if God does it, he does it on his own time. Mom, I want you to listen to me this morning. I know you're listening. Amen. I believe God in his own time. He's able to do it. Hallelujah. 
You see, some of us have a controversy and is in a fight with God because of things that we are going through. We are angry with God because we can see instant results. We have a conception of how faith operates. You see, uh, we, we, are, we, we have come to the place that we see faith as a right now deliverance. Because of this mindset, we become so centered on right now deliverance. But when we have problems, let me tell you something this morning. When things don't move out of the way as quickly as we believe they should, we have a tendency of giving up on our faith because we want a right now deliverance. That's what the ten spies, they wanted a right now thing. Well, the prophet said this, and it didn't happen. The prophet said this. He made a mistake here. Or the, let me tell you something, friends. Uh, these idiots don't know what they're talking about. You don't challenge the Holy Ghost. The Bible said when he, the Holy Ghost has come, to speak against that, it's the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. That's the working of the Holy Ghost. He said, you can speak against me, the son of man. I'm here. He said, but when he, the Holy Ghost, has come, to speak against that is blasphemous. The question I want to ask you is, do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you know Jesus Christ? It starts with knowing Jesus Christ. And no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't know what the Holy Ghost is saying in the saints under the Joshua teaching. Amen. So when God doesn't move right when we want God to move, we want a right now God, an instant God. God said, don't worry, I can, I can transcend all boundaries and I can move in a moment's time as I did with the, with the, uh, with the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Amen. Right at the time. Amen. When they're about to throw them in, God transcends from a faster dimension into a slower time. And I can see the fourth man stepping in. Hallelujah. Right on time. He steps in right on time. You believe it, friends? Oh, may God help us remember that we are walking by faith. And it takes some time to walk by faith. When you're walking somewhere, it takes some time. And God says, walk into this promise. We're walking right into this promise. We're walking into our full promise. Have you ever thought that God and the devil had a conversation about you? And God said to the devil, have you considered my servant? It doesn't matter the circumstances or not. They will walk with me. Amen. Amen. What Brother Bram said in the message, Victory Day, 1963. Actually, listen to this message this morning. Praise God. He said, when looks like everything has gone wrong, don't raise your hands. God is giving you a trial. He's got confidence in you. Hallelujah. When it looks like everything has gone wrong. God has given you a trial. He's got confidence in you. Oh, praise the Lord. I love it. To think that God will trust this trial to me. That he will bypass so many. And came to me with this trial. Because he has confidence. In me. Time tested memorial of God. Brett Bram said August the 18th, 1957, God's calling and it's time tested. That's right. It'll hold. God's got confidence in you. You will not falter in that trial. You will not fail in that trial. You will not be defeated in that trial. The promise is you're going in under Joshua. You believe it this morning? Oh, the devil tried to tell you, oh, you messed up. You said the wrong thing. You made the wrong decision. There's no wrong decision with the bride of Christ. There's no accident to a real child of God. Everything that happens in our life is the hands of God. The footsteps of the righteous are order of the God. You believe that? 
be certain of God, he says, another message, let me drop this in right quickly, he says, maybe if, you, if, if your healing is uh, lingered a little bit, God's got confidence in you that you'll hold on. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe if your healing has lingered a little while, God's got confidence in you that you're not going back to Egypt. You're not going to listen to the ten spies that says, oh, Joshua just did die by a guess or some, by some mental te- telepathy. Come on, church. Come on. It was the mastermind of God that spoke in this age. Right. Back in the, early, uh, in, the, in the early years of the message, I'm going through from 47, working my way up, and then from 65, way, working my way back down. I've done it countless times, the entire message of the prophet. I'm going through those years of his ministry in 47, 48. He said, now, the, the message was he had the vibration in his hand to detect the diseases. He said, but some of the diseases were so similar together that sometimes I couldn't detect the, the, uh, the vibration. I had a guess at it. You got these idiots all over Facebook, amen, trying to discredit the prophet of God that he was guessing. It wasn't what it was. It was the similarity of the disease. A prophet never guesses. A word prophet stands there with that said the Lord. He said the diseases, I was young, he was young in the ministry coming into, amen, into the ministry. He said the diseases were so similar that I couldn't sometimes de- detect the vibration that was so close together. I had to guess at it sometimes, amen. He knew what the disease was. Yes. Hello, church. Yes. Let me tell you, we have had a show word, a prophecy in this age. Do you believe it, church? Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you something. Satan has woke up, amen, a sleeping lion. Because I tell you, I will fight all the way, amen, for this truth that God has given me. I will stand all the way with this word that God has given us. I will stand with Jesus Christ, the pillar of fire of the saints. It is Jesus Christ. It is Christ in this hour. Can you shout amen this morning? God, give me some Caleb's. Amen. I love it. God said, I need somebody that's going to stand up. And say, though God slay me, yet I will trust him. That's why you're going through what it is that you're going through right now. It is just a test. It is just a test to see if you know why you are sitting in church this morning. Come on, somebody. It is a test for you to see why you're sitting in church today. Lord, I came to church. Not because I felt good. Not because that everything is way up here with me. But I came to church today because I love you. I'm like Job. Though God slay me, yet I will trust him. To see if you will totally lean on God. That's why the test. To see if you will totally lean on God. Oh, I just appreciate it. Be certain of God. In July the 8th, 1959. The prophet made a statement. He said, when you have done all that God has requested you to do, still he's silent. Come on, you, you're welcome to join me. You're welcome to join me everywhere. Still he's silent. Still he's silent. Just be sure that you know God. And remember, faith is silently waiting He's only testing your face to see what you'll do. God does that. Oh, oh my. Is it, if I, if, if I didn't have to preach, I would be shouting right now, speaking Apache, speaking another language. Amen. But let me tell you something, brother. Amen. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing to your face. God knows what he's doing in your life. You're not defeated. You're coming out victorious. This message is for you this morning. Just silently waiting. He only testing your faith to see what you'll do. But let me say this. Let me couple something to that. If he's already has confidence in you and he's given you the trial, he knows already what you will do. You know what you will do? Lord, I don't see it. 
I can't understand it, but I'm, I'm reconciling. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen, my circumstances and my situation. Amen, my faith of what God has said this morning. You see, he's trying to see if you're ready to go to another level in your faith. You believe it? He's testing you, Brother Roger, to take you to another level in your faith with Almighty God. You know what that is? Rapturing faith. It's one of the church. If you can't have faith enough for divine healing, how are we going to have rapturing faith? So God is exercising your faith on this side of Jordan, oh glory. I feel like shouting right now. Amen to develop spiritual muscles. That's some morning between 6 and 9 when the change sweeps over. My body was sucked up into that dimension. You believe it, friends? God's only exercising my faith. Hallelujah. Some says, well, I don't know anything about a rapture. Uh, rapture is not even in the Bible. Amen. Brother, let me tell you something. It's all over the Bible. It depends on what you're looking at. It needs to be caught up to be changed. But a person can't help what they see. If they can't see the rapture, that means they wouldn't be there. But I'm so glad this morning I can see myself in the rapture message. You believe it? You know, sometimes you have to press through the circumstances before God will compensate your faith. You have to press through the circumstances before God can compensate your faith. You know, when they took Joseph and they sold him into slavery and they threw him in a pit, amen. They had him down in a bakery. He blessed the entire bakery department. They threw him down in the pits, amen. They tried to uh, snuff life out of him. But I'm so glad through all the tests that he went through, God came out compensating him. Amen. Because he ended up being the deliverer of God's people. You might be in a pit this morning. You might be in a bakery this morning. But you're coming out by the grace of God. You believe it? Oh, I believe it, friends. Amen. Rapture and faith. Let me, let me uh, talk to Caleb's people uh, in conclusion this morning. My time is running out. Can, can I just take a few more moments? Amen. And talk to the Caleb's people before I conclude this message. Because I believe this is bride's material. I believe this is what God wants the bride to hear this morning. I'm talking about here. I'm not responsible for every place. I'm talking about here, the body of Christ. Amen. We're walking right into our full promise. You know, Caleb walked into the full promise. You believe that? Brother Graham said, an ever-present water from the rock. And July 23rd, the morning service, 1961, he says, Joshua and Caleb had that faith. Oh, I love it. They said, we are more than able to conquer anything that will come before us. You have that spirit upon you. We are more than able to conquer anything that comes before us. You need to tell the devil that this morning. We can conquer it. We understand that Caleb represented the tribe of Judah. When Joshua divided the tribes, certain tribes had certain symbolic meanings. And we understand that uh, Judah was a tribe that gave praise to Jehovah God regardless. And Caleb represented the tribe of Judah. That it doesn't matter what happened. Judah knew how to praise God. Judah knew how to lift up his hand. Judah could be in jail. Judah could be in prison. Judah could be in the pits. But Judah knew how to praise God. And Caleb represented the tribe of Judah. You believe it now. I want you to understand now that every one of the ten tribes or spies who went into Canaan had a spirit of forfeit on their lives. Every one of the ten spies, twelve went in besides Joshua and Caleb. The other ten had a spirit of forfeit on their lives. You see, they were willing to forfeit what Joshua told them for what they're seeing. They were willing to forfeit the Joshua's message for something else. They had a spirit of forfeits 
to forfeit the word, to forfeit the rapture, 10 days to the full promise, and they forfeited that. Are you listening to me? Are you reading between the lines? Hallelujah. You see, all the 10 spies saw was problems and not the power of God. All they saw was the problems and not the power of God. You see, we need to dwell on the power of God, not the problem. Our problem is not the problem. We need to dwell on the power of God. And that is what Joshua's message, restore back to the bride, return to Jubilee. Do you believe it, friends? Return to Jubilee. Listen in the uh, Laodicean church age. He said, it is in fact that the prophet of the last age must be bringing forth a message from God that will forerun the second coming of the Lord. For by his message will the hearts of the children be turned back to the Pentecostal fathers. And with the restoration of the word will come the restoration of the power. We're not focusing on the problem, but on the power of God. Are you with me this morning? The other ten, all they saw was problems. All they saw was problems. They can deny the cloud. They can deny the vision of the bridge. They can deny the, uh, the boy, the finished boy, raised from the dead. But I don't care what evidence they've got. Amen. I'm here to say I'm dwelling on the power of the living God. You believe it? Hallelujah. And with the restoration of the word will come the restoration of the power. All they saw was the problem. But we need to dwell on the power. Hallelujah. What about in South Africa? When 500,000 even was there. And the Spirit of God moved in such a phenomenal way. Amen. And thousands of blanket natives on Mohammedan turned and renounced their God. And threw their idols to the ground. That there was a dust storm that went up. What about the power of God? Are you with me, friends? Cloud doesn't distract me. Bridge doesn't distract me. The raising of the Phoenix boy doesn't distract me. Hello. I believe in my Joshua Amen. because my Joshua told me and described the land to me. Hallelujah. You see, I wasn't there when Jesus opened the blinded eyes. I wasn't there when he fed 5,000. I wasn't there when he turned water into wine. But I don't have to be there. And I don't have to sit. But I dwell on the power of God that did those things. You believe in this morning? Oh, Hallelujah. Did you know that the ten spies lied to the people in an attempt to persuade them not to go up into the land? Hello, don't get quiet. This is the word. I'm speaking to the Caleb's people. Did you realize that? The ten spies were liars. Not Joshua and Caleb. The spirit of lie was upon the ten spies. At Kiddish Barnia, not Joshua and Caleb. That's why the Bible says that they brought up an evil report. Come on now. Go with me to Numbers 13, 32. We were all around it last uh, Sunday. And the Bible says, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land... Uh, uh, through which we have gone to search it is a land that is eaten up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are, 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 are men of great statue. Not so. They told two lies. Come on. Joshua don't lie. Caleb don't lie. The ten spies lied. Number one, they said that the land was not a good place to live. That's a lie. And that it was eaten up the inhabitants. Second lie, they said, was they added the word all to their reports of the men of great statue. 
when they knew very well there were only five giants. You talking about a lying spirit? Amen. They said all of the people are of great stature. There were only five giants. Now who's got a lying spirit upon their lives? Come on, don't get quiet on me now. I'm talking about the Caleb's people. Walking into your full promise. Don't you let anybody stop you from going into that full promise. Isn't that what I just read out of the Bible? They said it. They said all the people both face blatant lie from the pits of hell. That's what Satan may be telling you this morning. All, all your family, the devil is going to take from your home. All your family, I'm going to take and I'm going to pull them away from church and I'm going to do this. You tell the devil, he's messed up. You tell the devil, he's mentally deranged. You tell the devil, he's insane. You tell the devil, it's out of your mind. Not all. You see, it is a spirit that opposes your victories, friends. It is an ugly spirit that preaches defeat and failure. I want to advise you this morning as I close, don't let a negative report get into your heart. Quit listening to the lies of the ten spies. Don't let a negative report get into your heart. You can find one place where Joshua lied. You can find one place where Caleb lied. But I showed you where the ten spies lied twice. Is that correct? Am I preaching the word or not, friends? Amen. Don't leave me out here. Amen. Like I'm not preaching. You know I'm preaching the truth to you this morning. Amen. Is that right? Walk into your full promise. Caleb, on the other hand, preach that you're not, that you're not in an impossible situation. Amen. Ten spies says, the land's not good. Everybody's, everybody's giant. Caleb and Joshua came back and says, you are not in an impossible situation. Now, who are you going to listen to this morning? Amen. Who would you listen to this morning? The ten spies, amen, are the Caleb's of this hour. Amen. There's nothing that you cannot con- conquer this morning. You can have your family back. You can have your children back. Your children can be saved. Your husband can be saved. Your marriage can be saved. Who are you listening to, friends? Amen. The Caleb's are telling you that there's nothing impossible with God today. You can be delivered of fear, doubt, and habits that have you shackled today. Don't let the enemy of your situation convince you that it cannot be done this morning. Don't let Satan trap you in by telling you that it's too late. That it's impossible. There's nothing impossible with God. I'm walking right into my full promise this morning. You believe it? You will possess your your promise. I've got a word for you this morning. You will possess your promise. When Joshua and the elders were determining the inheritance of the tribe. I want you to watch Caleb as I close. Caleb, on the other hand, approached God with a request. Amen. When Joshua and the elders were in a meeting determining the inheritance of the tribe, watch what the bride did. Caleb touched the bride. Caleb approached God with his request. Can I tell you what he said? Now therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day. Amen. Give me my mountain. While they were busy dividing the land. Caleb said, I want my mountain. He told Joshua, God promises to me and I want it. Tell the devil right now, I want it. Give me this mountain. You need to declare it before the Lord. I haven't been faithful for all these years to be denied of the promise. This problem is not going to stop me. This sickness is not going to keep me from being healed. This situation is not going to stop me from finding deliverance in my life. Hallelujah. Caleb was talking to God. He said, God... I got something to tell you. Hey, man, the little bride, 
Amen. In the last age, say, God, I've got something to tell you. I want my mountain. I want my family. I want my health. I want my sanity. I'm tired of this sickness. I'm tired of these threats of Satan. I'm tired of these mind, these mind games. I'm tired of these mind battles. I'm tired of Satan messing with my mind. Now give me my mountain. Give me this mountain. It is my promise and I want it. I will not quit until I get deliverance. Until my faith is pleasing to God. I want to stand and declare my promise. And if God be with me, then I shall overcome. Isn't that what Caleb said? Joshua, and if God be with me, I shall overcome. I want this mountain. This mountain is my family. It's my inheritance. It's the wealth of everything that God has given me. It, it, it holds everything for my body change. It's this message. It's Joshua's message. It's my family's deliverance. It's my healing. It's my salvation. It's my family. It's my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife. You believe it? I got something for you, Satan. My kind of seven and eight. Sometimes the devil comes around and talks to us. Micaiah said, rejoice not against me, O my enemy, when I fall. Everybody say fall. fall. We're all familiar with that, don't we? <laughs> I shall arise. And when I sit in the darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. You're not losing your mind, sister. You're not losing your mind, brother. Right? I shall arise and shine. There was lying to some of you this morning. You're going out of your mind. You're going to sit in the darkness. But God says, when I sit in the darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I shall arise. Tell the devil, I shall arise. I shall arise. I will not stay down. I shall arise. I don't care what kind of a mountain you're trying to climb. When God is with you, you will conquer it this morning. Caleb's faith looked beyond the problems to view the promise. It did. It looked beyond the problems to view the promises. And whatever God has said, Caleb's faith embraced it. Amen. Hallelujah. God said there's going to be a bride in this last age. Thus saith the Lord. The bride embraces that. The first bride fell in the Garden of Eden. The second bride fell at Nazi Rome. Spoke of his original seed. And but thus said the Lord, this bride will not fall. And the bride says, I believe it. I embrace it. Whatever God says, Caleb's faith embraces it. The promises of God are contingent upon our faith. Amen. They're contingent upon our faith. I have faith to believe it. Caleb walked right out into his full promise and possessed his full inheritance. And I close with this quote as our musicians please come. Oh Lord, just once more. June 28th, in the morning service, 1963. Instead of going on through, speaking of the Israelites, led by. The pit of fire, the angel of the Lord, which was Christ, instead of going through and following him, in about 10 days, they'd been in the full promise. I challenge you this morning, church of God, if they'd continue following the pit of fire, the angel of the Lord, which was Christ. They had come right into their full promise. We're standing at a crossroad in life right now. And we got a lot of spies, 10 spies out there that's trying to talk the bride out of this promise. But I've come with other Caleb's under our prophet's message. They under their message, not over his message, under their message. Hallelujah. We're not above the messenger. We're not above Joshua. We're under Joshua. As long as Caleb stayed under Joshua, he whooped the enemy. 
Instead of going on through, led by the pillar of fire. That's why they denied the pillar of fire. That's right. They have no revelation of the angel of the covenant. They have no revelation of Jesus Christ, but you and I do. That's why this message is for you this morning. You're walking into your full promise. Because you're under that pillar of fire. Instead of going through, let the pillar of fire, the angel of the Lord, which was Christ, instead of going on through and following him, in about 10 days, this is the most pathetic thing. They had been in a full promise. So close, friends. So close. But yet so far for some people. We're so close. But yet it is so far for some people. But we're under the pillar of fire. Are you willing to walk in the light? We'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercies are bright. Do you appreciate them this morning? Can you give the Lord a good round of applause this morning? Shall we all stand? Make a commission to him right now. Say, Lord, I'm making a covenant with you. We'll walk. Evening lights. to our streaming audience. May God richly bless you for the next little while. Our midweek service will be canceled here due to construction and remodeling of the church, but our Sunday services will be available. Please remember us in your prayers. We haven't left the message because we have to cancel a few Wednesday night service. The message is in our heart, so just want you to know that. How can you leave something that you are? I love this sister right here. <laughs> How can you leave something that you are? God bless you. Shalom to you until our next service. We appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. Stay. What a blessing it was.